This program will teach you how to recognize malfunctioning surgical instruments. It identifies their component parts and demonstrates the techniques used to evaluate instruments for proper operation. Although these procedures are simple, the techniques are specific and attention to detail is important. Section 1. Ring Handled Forceps Component Identification Ring handled forceps are composed of a male and female shank that are joined together at a pivot point known as the box lock. The jaws are the working end of the instrument. The box lock joins the male and female shanks together and is connected at a pivot point with the pin. The shanks are the shafts between the box lock and the ratchet. The ratchets lock together and hold the jaws closed at different positions. Note that not all ring handle forceps have ratchets. The ring handles are used to operate the instrument. Ring handles consist of male and female shank units, jaws, box lock, shanks, ratchets, and ring handles. This section will explain how ring handled forceps operate and how to inspect the instruments for proper operation. The vast majority of ring forceps operate with the same basic settings that balance three different adjustments. The box lock, ratchets, and jaws must be adjusted in a balanced relation to each other for the instrument to operate correctly. Step one, inspection for cracks. Inspect all instruments for cracks. If there are any cracks discovered, the instrument must not be used. The most common cracks found on ring forceps will be noticed on the box lock between the pin and the outer edge. Cracks will also be found where the jaws join the box lock and where the box lock joins the shank. Pay close attention to the jaws on needle holders. The jaws are known to crack where the jaws join the box lock. Step 2. Box Lock Inspection When properly adjusted, the box lock allows the instrument to open and close smoothly while firmly holding the jaws as they close. Surgical instruments are exposed to extreme temperature variation due to autoclaving. This can cause the box lock to loosen due to heat-related expansion and contraction. The action of closing and opening in the instrument can also loosen the box lock. A loose box lock can cause an instrument to fail during use because it does not hold the ratchets firmly together and it does not allow the jaws to align properly. To inspect the box lock for looseness, firmly grasp the ring handles in each hand. Wiggle them in opposing directions with the instrument slightly open. Notice the separation movement in the jaw and the ratchets. There should be no movement or very minimal movement in the box lock. Step 3. Ratchet Inspection When properly adjusted, the ratchets should be in a straight line in relation to each other. With the jaws closed, the ratchet should be almost touching and should mesh together at each closed step. With the ratchets completely closed, inspect how the ratchet teeth mesh together. Worn teeth will not mesh properly and can cause a properly adjusted instrument to not hold and close. Forceps with warm ratchet should be sent out for repair. Step 4. Jaw Inspection First inspect the jaws from the side to ensure that the jaws do not overlap. Note the side alignment of these two instruments. Note that a backlight is any bright light positioned behind the instrument during inspection. Position the instrument in front of a backlight. As you close the ratchets, the jaw should close evenly from the tip to the base with the jaws completely closed. There should be no irregular gaps between the two jaws. 
Pay close attention to the tips to ensure that they do not reopen when the ratchets are completely closed. On forceps with teeth on the tip of the instrument, slowly close the teeth and observe how they mesh together. The teeth should come together without the sides of the teeth touching until completely closed. Step 5. Burr Inspection Burrs are sharp distortions in the metal that can cause an instrument to malfunction. Carefully visually inspect the sharp points on towel clips and the tips of ring handle forceps. Micro burrs can best be discovered by carefully feeling the surface of the instrument with your fingers. Ring handle forceps inspection review. Inspect the instrument for cracks, inspect the box lock, inspect the ratchets, inspect the jaws, and inspect for burrs. Tissue forceps come in many different sizes and teeth patterns with three different characteristics consisting of tissue forceps with teeth at the tip, tissue forceps with teeth in the jaw similar to the jaws of ring forceps, and tissue forceps with both teeth at the tip and teeth in the jaws. Its components consist of two body pieces joined at the base and the three basic job patterns previously described. Please pause this program at this point to become familiar with these component parts. Tissue forceps component review. Tissue forceps have a joint base, two body pieces, the jaws with teeth at the tip, teeth in the jaws, teeth in the tip and the jaws. To inspect tissue forceps with jaw teeth, first inspect the jaw teeth for distortion or burrs. Next, completely close the instrument while viewing the flat side. Inspect the tips closely to ensure there is no overlapping. Then position the instrument in front of the back light and apply the same inspection process that is used on the jaws of ring handled forceps. The forceps should touch at the tip and gradually close to the base with no visible gaps or distortion. Always finish tissue forcep inspection by checking the jaw separation. Tissue forceps with teeth at the tip of the jaw. To inspect these forceps, inspect the teeth for burrs and to confirm they are not bent. Next, slowly close the instrument while viewing the tip in on. The male and female teeth should intermesh without contact until completely closed. Tissue forceps with jaw and tip teeth. To inspect these forceps, use a combination of the two previously mentioned inspection processes for tissue forceps. First, inspect the tip teeth for proper alignment. Next, inspect the jaw teeth for proper closure using the back line. 